Hello and welcome to episode two of the Subsbench podcast video series 2024. Uh, we're joined today on the bench by Isaac Powell. Isaac, it's uh, brilliant to have you with us and um, yeah, glad you're here. Thanks for having me on. Isaac, great to have you here. Um, obviously, we've got a, a relationship now through Peninsula Power, but uh, your your footballing career will, will go through. Um, you obviously were born 2002. Yep. Long yeah, time ago. In Brisbane. Hospital, yeah. Redcliffe Hospital. Yeah, Redcliffe Hospital. Born on the Peninsula. Yeah. Um, and Peninsula Power is the first club that you played for, I think you said earlier. From under sixes through to under ten, so yeah, pee wees or whatever they call it. Yeah, I think pee wees. No, we do. I think I think Peninsula Power's pee wees. How else? Oh, anyway, yeah. When I started, I think it was under sixes. Let's go, pee wees. Um, yeah. So I I went down there. I think I was four or five. I'm pretty sure. Um, played with the under sixes. Did that season again, and then played through a power tool under tens with dad coaching. So yeah, yeah. You obviously you've gone on to, to do you know really well at six seven eight nine. Were you always better than the other kids? I, and I know you're quite a humble kid, but uh, were you always um, just that cut above where you, where you were at? And was the potential always there? Um, I think I was doing well from a young age. Yeah. Um, Yes, yeah. he was better. Yeah, than all the other he's kids. a better peewee than the other peewee. <laughs> <laughs> the bigger peewee. Yeah, no, I think I was. I think I um from young, I thought I was always doing quite well. And then I'm pretty sure in under eights was the first like development programs were starting yeah. with, through Football Queensland. So I was a part of those from eight years old. I'm pretty sure. So yeah, um, yeah, I'd like to think I was doing all right from when I started. Yeah, and then you get to under tens and play for your dad. I was playing. He was my coach the whole way through from when I started, through. yeah. Um, I think he was coaching or assistant coach of my teams until under 12s probably. Yeah. And then on and off for a couple more years, yeah. So the, the move from Peninsula Power to Morton Bay, was that at the time with, with Morton Bay, uh, they were MPL at the time and Peninsula yeah. Power would have been with BPL still? Yeah, that's most of the reason. Well, that was the reason why I left. Um, so I left Power in under 10s and went to Albany Creek for the 11s um, to get ready for the Morton Bay under 12s, yeah. Yeah, so that was, and did and your dad go across to coach? Yeah, you? I think he was assistant coach um, when I was playing at Ace as well. Um, had Jason Groth at yeah. um, Albany Creek and then at Morton Bay for a couple of years, so yeah. And Albany Creek always had decent junior sides as well, so. Yeah, yeah. Albany Creek have always been reasonably strong on the north side. Yeah, they used to beat us, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Switched over. Can't be yeah. able to join them. Yeah. Um, and then, Obviously, for two or three years, you, you must have gone quite well because you you moved across to uh, the QES, which is no longer around in, in the men's system, but um, I think it's still around in the, in the women's. Was that like a case of getting picked up by the QAS? Or yeah, it, trial? it came from the 14s nationals, Danikoffs. Um, I think there was five of us that got brought in to join their squad. Just originally, it was a train, I think. I mean, I definitely wasn't expecting it. Um, because of, we were a bit younger than, or the year younger than the other boys. Um, so we came in and trained with David Bella and Pat Hedges, um, which was a bit of a change from what I was used to. But um, yeah, what, was, what was Dave like as a coach? Um, he's, he's pretty strict. Yeah, he was tough. He yeah. was tough. Yeah, he feel like he's like that one coach that prepares you for, well, for senior, senior football. football. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, he was good. Him and Pat were good. Yeah, yeah. I was I was with him last week actually, um, and he, he saw the. The uh, the Isaac Powell thing behind uh, the power. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was saying he was asking about you. So, but yeah, he's uh, yeah, he's a good guy, Dave. But yeah. I can imagine as a fourteen year old, you're definitely not prepared for that. Yeah, I I wasn't going from pretty um, relaxed environments. Yeah, the whole time up until there, and then we were like the younger guys coming into a squad which had high expectations every week to do well, and we were training like the training was much more professional and more days a week like we we're training here at Meekin Park um so did that did that spark you up immediately to like reach or to get to that level or did it take you a bit of time to sort of adjust um probably competing at nationals the 13s 14s did that because that, that's when I opened yeah it's 13 year olds with full beards <laughs> <laughs> that was you guys wasn't it no. <laughs> yeah and I was only pretty 
small as a kid yeah. coming up, up against some of those That's guys. Right. Was, yeah. Still. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I guess that kind of was a bit of an eye-opener, going down there and playing against the best. Like, you're no longer the best. Like, you're... Yeah, you realise there's another level kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. that was good. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and at this point, because I know that when you're young, you get moved from position to position so they can kind of get you used to. At this point, have you identified, I'm going to be left-sided, full-back, bombing on? Is that, at that point, is that set in stone that that's where you're going to play? Um, probably from under 12s, any rep stuff I was doing was playing left-back. Yeah. Um, but then club football, I was still playing in the midfield. But I think I probably knew if I was going to kick on, it was going to be left-back. Left yeah. 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 Just easier, isn't it? You and me both. Yeah. Right? Just on that, like, let's, my foot's back. <laughs> hey, <laughs> kids. Let, let's just throw it out there. That's true, actually. What's the easiest position to play in football? Probably right back. Coach. Coach, pretty easy. Well, you never I, I'm saying full back. If you can run. Yeah. I'm saying full back. That's why I disagree because I'm not very good at the running thing. But yeah. The modern day full back is a bomb on. Nah. You, you need to be able to get That's up and down. Back. I believe but, it's. Like, I mean, back when I was, I'm, I'm 45 now, but when <laughs> I was playing. You don't, you're not showing it. <laughs> um, no, but back when I was playing it, the fullback literally give it to the winger. Yeah. And they just started to defend yeah. the winger. Well, I mean, I only started playing there because we didn't have anyone else that had a left foot, basically. Yeah. You just get stuck there. But, yeah. Yeah. I mean, some some like it, some don't. What about you? Definitely like it. Yeah. <laughs> Good. It's more time, more space. Yeah. Don't have to worry about I 360. That's yeah. that's the biggest thing, I think, yeah. is like you, you, you've got – you always know the touch line's pretty much behind you. It, Anywhere that you can see the whole pitch, it's a lot easier. I do, I do agree with that. Obviously, being coming from being a goalkeeper, where no. I didn't really, I wasn't really a footballer. I stand in your cage, just mate. stand in my it's cage. Like but I definitely appreciate, like, yeah, midfielders I, and stuff like that with their three sixty degree vision. I, yeah, I will say when I first, like, when I first went and played left back at East, I really liked getting the ball and always facing forward and having a bit of space to move into. It's a bit different now because I feel like everything's a bit more compact. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no, that's fair enough. Uh, and might as well. What's the what's the hardest position to play? Goalkeeper. <laughs> I'm pressure of a striker. Attacking midfielder. Yeah. So, so me personally, I think goalkeeper probably is the hardest on the pitch, just because you make a mistake. That's, mm. that's what I'm getting at. If but if if it's an outfield, because I think we'd all agree that goalkeepers pretty shit. It's it's, it's difficult. But outfield player, the on pressure's the on the striker. I'm going ten attacking um, midfielder. Yeah, I don't know. Depends on the team, I guess. Yeah, overall, uh, the pressure to score goals. The pressure not to make mistakes, like similar to a goalkeeper for a centre back. You could probably yeah. pick, you could argue anything through the spine, right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, true. Like, and, anything so anyone who plays wide has got it easy. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, well, you got to just get it. I, I think centre back, it. probably, because like strikers, if they're sort of relying on chances being created for them as well, so it's not all on them. For a centre back, you just got to deal with what's chucked at you, I suppose. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, I think the most yeah. I don't put it to the viewers. Yeah. Well, maybe we <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's a striker. I really do. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, All the glory too. Yeah, they do get the glory. If they get it right, they they do get the spoils. Yeah. That's why they're on the big books. That's it. Um. So QES uh, obviously goes well because Brisbane Raw come knocking and uh, and sign you up. Uh, was that something that you expected? Did you think, I'm there or thereabouts, the best left back around? If they're going to pick a left back up, it's going to be me? Or did it come out of the blue? Um, I was probably expecting it because that was the year they started off the academy. Yeah. Um, so I went from the QAS into like the 16s, I think, at the Raw. Did so the Raw Academy kind of take over what QS was? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I think most of the boys um, ended up coming across. Um, so we had a pretty strong team. Yeah, I guess it was like the five of us who were with the QAS, I think, just went straight across, plus yeah. picked up all the top guys who were playing in the NPL. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I played in the 18s NPL for a few few years. I think, so when you'd have been about 15? Yeah, 15, 16, yeah. Yeah. Who was coaching the team at that point? Uh, Grossi. Oh, Grossi was yeah, there. Grossi yeah, Grossi was there, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it was a good team. Is this the team that won the, the Y League? No, that was the the youth team. So, I think it would have been at least a year later, maybe 
two. Yeah. Um, so it was a it was an older team playing in that um that national comp. So that could be players who came down from the first team if they were young enough could still play. Yeah. So if, like those AS boys that came, um, like Kai, yeah. Moza, Bryce, Jay, all those guys um were in that that team plus the younger boys coming through. Yeah. And it's obviously football is going well for you because uh, you're doing so well that at 16 years of age, um, you get called up with the first team. Yeah, that caught me completely by surprise, to be honest. Because that, that came on the back of the, the Y League win. Yeah, I think it was the following It was following one week. week later, yeah. yeah. Um, honestly, I think I trained with the first team a couple times, like a handful yeah. of times before I even played that game. Um, and then I come on in the first half. I think Jack did his ACL and I think Luke Devere come off injured as well. So two injuries in the first half. So I had to come on and I think I played about 60 or 70. So I, I wasn't really even expecting to get on maybe. And this is 16 years old. I was going to say, fancy at 16, two defensive injuries in the first half. <laughs> Never happens. Yeah, nah, it was, it was pretty crazy, yeah. Did it? You know when you're, you're named on the bench, you're probably thinking, not much chance I'm getting on here. Yeah. Bit of experience, mm. soak it all best, in. Best sit in the house. Sit yeah. back. For, this is all right. Nice and comfy. This, and then half an hour in. Isaac, <laughs> your pads on, son. <laughs> do you, do you have time for nerves, or do you just think? Uh no, it was a pretty big rush. Like I said, I wasn't expecting to even get on. Definitely yeah. not in the first half. Um, so it was massive adrenaline rush. Getting yeah. Told. Like. I think when, I can't remember who went down first, but when that happened, it was kind of like, oh, I get on like, it. <laughs> here we go. But it didn't, like we had the cover for that. But then when the second one went down, like within 30 minutes, um, yeah. Is it, it would is have it been better? quick as well. Yeah. Yeah, like I'm thinking if it happens now and like you're a coach yeah. now, so, you know, and when someone goes down, you look at your bench and you might be like, you know, 16 year old has never played before or midfield, all right. Could, could we move him full back and equal? At that point, when the second one goes down, and you think I'm definitely on here? Yeah, I thought it was bound to happen. Really, yeah, yeah. Um, and it was a big game as well. We were playing Sydney, Sydney. FC yeah. at home. I think we were. I think we were down one nil. Um, what did it finish? Uh, one, you know the score. <laughs> I think maybe in two one. Yeah, you two one win. Two one. Yeah. Uh, would you? Is it? Do you think looking back better that you didn't have that time as opposed to getting told on a Friday you're playing tomorrow? Probably, yeah. Um, I guess it was just just had to happen. Yeah, I didn't have too much time to think about it or anything. Just had to jump straight in, which ended up working out pretty well. Um, yeah. See a few young boys getting the getting the nod on a Thursday at training that they're going to have their first appearance. Today themselves up until kick off and yeah, and carry yeah it's on a big you. deal i think i'd probably yeah. prefer that it's a big deal just yeah. get thrown in the deep end on yeah. first, first one goes down you're probably thinking i'm gonna get i'm gonna get I'm my gonna debut get 10, the end, get yeah. 10 it's gonna be the cream time there's no pressure and then straight into it one nil down mm. you end up beating sydney at, where that time would have been what very strong they've been very strong yeah i think they were maybe top, top two, yeah. maybe in the league at the time who give sure. you the debut was it john aloisi or was it Darren, Darren Davies? Darren Davies was yes. in by then. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he was good. Good with the young boys. Yeah, and sixteen. Were you? We were school. Yeah, I was still in year twelve, which was pretty crazy. Back to school on Monday. <laughs> so it was a weekend or a Friday night or something, and you had to go about the weekend. I it wasn't the it next was, morning. Nah, I think it was a Friday night game yeah. actually. Um, so yeah, it was a Friday because I had a few, few mates more Instagram there. Instagram followers when you woke up on. Was Instagram yeah, even yeah. around then? Oh, it would have been. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Oh, I'm not, not that old. 2019. Would, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you would have been real unpopular for the girls once you made your debut, I would imagine. Being yeah, real, what was it like going real, to school? Uh, you're a real bad looking bloke too, which was which just sucks for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, I don't know. It was pretty crazy. Um, like, I mean, it's still school, so it's probably just like, felt yeah, normal, like what did, it was. Did the, like any of the teachers like try and, try and cut you down to size? Like, have you done your own work? Like, <laughs> nah, just... nah, it wasn't like that. Well, I guess even being, well, everyone knew, like everyone did know, but I guess being football, like it's not like I was playing for the Broncos or. Yeah, I suppose yeah, no, not, I mean, that, not that big of a team. But not that big of a team. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I guess everyone, like everyone 
knew what was going on, which was pretty cool. Like I had my mates were there, yeah. like in school uniform and stuff at the game. Um, to feel, I don't know if it was, I think that game or those few games that I played at the end of that season, I was getting the train from school into Suncorp. To play for the first day. <laughs> yeah. Just like, what? yeah. Just with my backpack. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, just leave school early, walk down. School so. backpack. Yeah. Eyes like Paul written on the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm off. I think yeah. one time I seen, um, I was walking from Milton Station up to Suncorp and I seen Dill went to Walsh driving. Yeah. And I just jumped in his car and gave me a lift. Yeah. Um, must, must have been pretty good chat that Friday afternoon or whenever. So you do anything on the weekend, mate? Ah, uh, nah. Yeah. Nothing major. Yeah, just off to Suncorp. Off to Suncorp. Oh, the Bronx plan. <laughs> 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 yeah. Good. Yeah. So, and obviously you, you, you had a bit more involvement with the first team um, towards the end of that year, which probably is it leads on to uh, October that year, the Joey's call. So similar question to before, did you expect that one or did that one kind of just come from nowhere? Um, it couldn't have been many 16 year olds playing first team at that point in the league. Yeah, that one wasn't too surprising. Um, I think during that time I started playing with the Raw, there was a camp over in Turkey with the national team, yeah. which I was I uh, got called up to go to, but I didn't end up going to. Um, so I think I was pretty hopeful that I was going to get into that squad, um, which was it was pretty crazy to play the World Cup, obviously. Um, so yeah, it wasn't it wasn't um, a massive su- surprise, but and where was it the World Cup? Um, in Brazil. Oof. Which <laughs> did you play against any players that have now kicked on to subsequent superstars? Yeah. Um, leading up to it, like uh, national team camps and stuff, when we played, uh, we played over at St George's Park a few games. We played against um, the England team, played against South Korea, and I think we played against Brazil as well. Um, I remember in the England squad, there was that Tino Livermento. Um, he's playing at Newcastle now, doing pretty well. Um, and Morgan Rogers just signed at Villa. Um, I remember those guys were probably the two standout ones. I think they were both on my side. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, that Easy. was that was a that was a good game. So, yeah. yeah. And then so you got the tournament. You get through the groups. Yeah, we made it out of the group. Um, we played. We beat Nigeria. That was our final game to take yeah. us through. And then we played France in the round of sixteen. Yikes. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that was. What was the Obviously, you, you go to a World Cup. What's what's the target? We want to win the World Cup, but mm. Australia targets probably the targets probably is not winning it. It was getting out the group. Something <clears> that you just looked at and said, "Right, let's get out the group. That will be a huge success for us." And then anything else as a bonus on top. Yeah, getting out the group was massive for us. Um, but to be fair, with uh, Trevor Morgan, the coach, yeah. and the culture we had was pretty was pretty strong. Um, yeah. I think you see it with the Socceroos like the whole way through. You don't really, you're not phased by anyone. Yeah. So, um, like when you're coming up against like squads like France and you see they've got boys playing in League One already, like when we're still like coming from school. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. It's pretty crazy to think you're playing against them. But um, yeah, we never really doubted ourselves. Like our yeah. culture was pretty strong. We thought we could take it to anyone. But um, yeah, there was some. What was the score in that game? Can you remember? Ah, uh, yeah, it was five nil. Five nil. See, yeah. you always remember the ones. You <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got caught up in their celebrations. I think on their fifth goal, and I got uh, sucked <laughs> off in like ninetieth minute or something. They were all in a huddle around me, which was fun. <laughs> but, um, and they were massive. That f- yeah. French squad, they like were, men, big boys, yeah, big boys, big yeah. athletic boys. I, I thought you meant you just position. chose to join in. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I might as well celebrate. Take me with you, boys. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then must have been long after that. If that was uh, 2019 late, so COVID must have kicked off not long after that because wasn't that early 2020 that it really mm. took over? Yeah. Um, so football, I guess I can't even remember. Football kind of shuts down for a bit and then it didn't it come back around about, I want to say like May, June, didn't they have that five or six game period? Yeah, so it was on and off for a long time like kind of as the restrictions kept getting more and more critical yeah um, that's right it did so robbie fowler's in at this point at the initially. yeah he was yeah he yeah. was in um and then we got like the whole league moved down to have the hub in sydney yeah um so we're down there for six or seven weeks um 
just in the hotel, going to trainings, playing games still, um, which was pretty full on. Yeah, crazy um, time. I think it was it's we didn't get many much notice. I mean, it was just there was no problem for me because <laughs> yeah. I was yeah, the wife playing football. Like, <laughs> yeah, for like the older guys who, that, yeah, they had kids. Yeah, and they had yeah. Like, everything yeah. going on. It was. That's it was mad, yeah, it was only a couple of days. When you look back at that, when you look um, back, I can't. Yeah, anyway. some, some of the stuff you see, like you know, it, I remember, it would have been around that time. You know, it was like um, the whole team was out for the exercise time. It looked like a prison. Like boys just mm. walk around in a circle, basically, yeah. like no ball in sight, just getting their steps in. Yeah, it was it was a change, but I mean, it was like a holiday for like us. Yeah. <laughs> Stay in um, these nice yeah. hotels, probably. Decent hotel. hotel. Uh, it was all right. I think we're in like the Hunter Valley or something. Oh, yeah. sounds, sounds horrible. Could, be worse. Could have been a Formula One in Wentworth or yeah. something like that. <laughs> Every few days, just get out more winery. There's probably a winery up somewhere in there. Yeah, these 17 year old kids would love to wine. <laughs> yeah, swinging off the passion pot. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how was uh, how was Robbie Fowler? Obviously, yeah. superstar back in the day. Um, was he was he good crack? Yeah, it was good. Him and um, Tony Grant, they yeah, were it's, it's unreal to have around. To be fair, yeah, yeah. Um, again, good with us young boys. Um, there was a couple of us like me, Kai, um, Jordy, Macklin were kind of were in and around it. Yeah, um, not first team regular starters. No, nah, no, nah, yeah, we, yeah, and they were especially Tony. He was definitely on. Um, especially in training, just pushing us on to yeah kick on and not just make up the numbers really. Yeah. Give it a good crack. So, yeah, it was good having them in. And yeah. were there were there a spot Sonny Fowler? I mean, Grant had obviously played played Premier League, but then dropped down a bit. But Fowler being as high profile as he was, was he very approachable? In a, if you wanted to ask him a question like, oh, like Gaffer, what about you know when you played for Liverpool in this game? Like, was he good like that? Yeah, he was good. Um, he was definitely there to do well. Yeah. Um, like. Obviously, it's a good reflection on him if the team's performing. So, yeah. um, very easy to talk to. Like, yeah, it always had a bit of banner and stuff at training, which was good. Still yeah. had a decent left foot. So, yeah, I can imagine he was half decent in a five aside. You only need a few yards, don't you? Yeah. And he could finish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you'd want him on your team. Yeah, for sure. But he, he went home. During COVID, I think he thought, I can't work for the next month or two. He went, so he went, home. went home during a round of golf with Alex Kinn, didn't he? Yeah. The, the, the story of the was, he just, <laughs> yeah. just took off on just that. Like, got on the uh, plane and went. He was, you go. And, uh, and obviously it was a bit touch and go whether he's going to come back. And in the end, I think whatever happened, happened, cancelled the contract or we moved on. And uh, Warren Moon takes over. So, and that again was another, I want to say like a bit of a bubble thing. There's about four or five games that, they had to get done very quickly. Um, were you involved in, in Mooney's squad as well, or was it very similar to, to, to Fowler's, where it's like a, an extended squad all went down at the same time? In regards to going down to... Because the, didn't they finish the season off in June, I think? They, they played it a couple of months later than what it should have finished. Yeah, my memories. <laughs> my memories found me on that one, Benny. Yeah. That, Pretty sure of that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I th- you're 100% right. Yeah. Keep going. Cool. <laughs> All right. And then um, around about uh, June 2021, so you've been involved in the first team, you played a lot of MPL uh, for Raw Youth at this point. Um, you get diagnosed with leukemia. So how did that come about? It's not something you just go in and, and get tested for. There must have been something that, that triggered the, I suppose, the the diagnosis or the testing. Yeah, so I was sick for like a couple months probably leading up to the actual diagnosis. It first started off with like a sore shoulder, um, yeah. just like shoulder pain. So I was getting treated for like just general inflammation in my shoulder from the physio just because obviously no one was expecting what it resulted to be. Um, so I was kind of just like in and out of training for, yeah, like probably a month, even longer. Um, like sometimes it'd get better and I'd come into a sesh or I'd just be like doing running with the physio. Um, and then like I just had lots of different symptoms, which ended up being like in hindsight, exactly yeah. what you'd expect looking at me to be. Like bone related or like did they feel muscular or at the point where you're just like, 
this is sore like um, so the shoulder bone pain was just like a really bad ache yeah. um, that pretty bad it would stop me from doing most exercise um, that led into I uh, had a bit of chest pain yeah um, which was originally thought to be just like um, infections mm-hmm. like pneumonia kind of thing um, and then had like bruising that's another one yeah um, those are the main ones was the chest pain and the um, bone pain yeah uh, which was yeah it got pretty bad and I was like in the hospital yeah went in and out of hospital a couple of times just misdiagnosed with all like sorts of things yeah um, and then I rich- uh, eventually got onto a hematologist who suggested to get a bone marrow biopsy because yeah. that was kind of at that point I was like a bit sick um, like physically unwell like yeah. throwing up all that kind of thing um and then it was the day after I got back, I uh, got that bone marrow biopsy. I got a ring in the morning saying that it was leukemia, which. So they told you all the form? They told my parents, yeah. I think I was just in bed, like at yeah. home, yeah. And what, feeling? Yeah, yeah, I was pretty, I was pretty unwell, yeah. Yeah. So, do your mum and dad, like, when you go to upsell, look, we now have a chat and sit you down? Yeah, it was, that's exactly what happened. They were, I could kind of tell something was up mm-hmm. because I knew the biopsy was to rule out cancer. Like that was yeah. the, the reason for getting it. But I still had like no expectation that that was going to be it. Yeah. Um, so I was pretty, my parents were pretty emotional, I guess, as you would expect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, they just told me, told me what the hematologist said. And then pretty much from there, I just packed up a bag and went to the Royal Brisbane for a month. Straight away. Pretty, yeah, same day, yeah. Mm. I suppose that's why they probably said it over the phone. It's we need to act sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. It was get the ball rolling straight away. Yeah. It's a rough conversation for your parents to have to have. Yeah, it was. I guess the whole period of that time was mm. definitely the toughest on them. I mean, I'm just yeah, it'd be a lot of emotions. That's for sure. Yeah, is it one of them things that you've been through uh, a few things in life where you just you remember the actual word that someone delivers news to you. And it like for me, I remember getting told by my mom that my dad had died. And I'd never called me dad, daddy in my life. I'm 11 year old, 12, just gone 12. Um, and she wakes us up six in the morning and she, she says, um, your daddy died last night. And the I, I've always remembered the word, even though it just stuck like one sentence it always stuck with me is it that kind of thing that you just you'll never forget being told that information it just comes out and it just it's an imprint there yeah no i wouldn't say the wording but i definitely remember um like feeling the the visual image of it happening and definitely the feeling like as soon as mum said that's what it was i remember i still remember my heart like just sinking yeah um yeah but the feeling i definitely remember yeah yeah, so straight in the hospital, um, no time. But it's like not having any time to, you know, prepare for your debut. Almost, it's just like get your gear, bang, we're straight off, and you're straight in for treatment that day. Like, did they start treatment that day or the next morning? Or yeah, technically, I, I did start the treatment from the following day, but it started with it was just like um, high dose steroid tablets. Yeah, so there was no. Um, like physical was effects. It preparing you for what was about it to It was come. just the first step of the treatment. Um, I think it was a way of like, yeah, still treating the leukemia. Um, yeah. And then I think it was day six is when the chemo started, um, which was, I didn't really know what to expect, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but ended up having a pretty good run the first time. Yeah, I was in hospital for about five weeks. Yeah. Um, I was, yeah, I was, got a bit sick with the, with the chemo, like, um, like throwing up and yeah. that kind of thing. But compared to some of the other experiences I've heard that first, that first month or so wasn't too bad. Yeah. So is it like, forgive us for not knowing all of the, <clears throat> the, the ins and outs here. Uh, is it how many, how many days per cycle? So it's, it's dependent on what kind of protocol 
yeah, like your treating team wants to go with. So I was, yeah, in there for that period of time and it would be like different types of drugs like on set days. So there'll be like I had a schedule pretty much. Yeah. Like each day would be um, like set, yeah, drugs that you'd be getting at like a certain time kind of thing. Um, yeah. Some silly boy. Do you or your family have any say on the strategy? Do, do they say, look, we can do this? pre rough or we can go this way like did they ask you what you what you just wanted to do or did they just not go really. like, bang this is yeah no nah, it was pretty much just that was like the first step to like the yeah treating the leukemia um yeah a lot of consent forms yeah but mm -hmm. um yeah it was that was just the way to go yeah given like you were just starting a professional football career as an athlete like through that time was there any thoughts of getting back to football or is it literally just get through this? Yeah, I, I don't think I thought about football for a little while, yeah, because um, I'd already been kind of out of the game for a couple months. Um, I hadn't played or trained properly for a little while. Yeah. Um, so I was kind of just trying to get through the next little bit. And at that point, I always knew I was going to play again. Yeah. Like I wasn't too worried about it. Um, it was just a matter of time, really. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, so at this point, I'm assuming they've said you're locked. You're going to recover, um, get the treatment. We've caught it early, potentially. You're going to recover. Um, was it that kind of vibe, like that yeah. kind of message? Yeah, I knew I was going to be okay. Um, yeah. Like the prognosis was was pretty good. Yeah. Um, they were always quite confident. Um, the type of leukemia I had, um, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, is the most common type in young people. Yeah. So that also gave me a little bit of confidence knowing that. They know what they're doing and there's been a lot of like experience and research on it so yeah and how long after diagnosis did you go public um a couple of months yeah i think a couple of months yeah. so you got the initial treatment was that um to get your head around the whole situation or was it just got to focus on this before worrying about the might kind of come yeah attention wise um, yeah i guess i just didn't really want to deal with it too much yeah and even when i was in hospital i had a lot of support from lots of different people yeah. like i guess people slowly just started to yeah find out so i spent yeah a lot of time responding to messages and stuff which i guess was nice but i just didn't want to yeah i don't know and i yeah i just didn't want to i didn't think it was like a massive yeah you know, mm. i'm just yeah just again just, probably as you said benny like with your debut it's probably happening so fast being so young you're almost like naive to the fact that yeah. how serious it mm. could be and yeah. you sort of just take everything in your stride when you're young you're like yeah i'll beat it like i'm young i'm fit so it's probably yeah a bless well, not a blessing but it's like if there's a way you're going to do it it'd be that positive it's, attitude and being like yeah. it, coming yeah. from a pro footballing background where you're used to adversity i guess yeah yeah but also having as you say, the, the experts around saying, we've dealt with this before. This is what we're going to do. Not a question of should we do this, do that. This is what we're going to do. We're going to be okay. Must have helped. And also someone at your age who pretty much every challenge that's been in front of them on a football field, you've kind of gone to the next level. You've you've overcome every team you've ever gone to. You've got the next level and you've gone to a World Cup and you've played first team football. So naturally you're, you're a winner at that point. You just... You overcome hurdles. Yeah, I guess you could look at it that way. I, yeah, it was just, like I said, a matter of time. Like I knew um, from the beginning pretty well, like the structure of what I was going to do. Like I was going to be in hospital for this set yeah. five weeks. Then I was going to have a break. Then I was going to be back in, like in and out, like week on, week off for a little bit. Then I was going to have a break again. And then it kind of led into like outpatient treatment. So yeah. just coming into the hospital for like the day to get the treatment then go home. So it was pretty structured and I knew when it should be finishing. Although that did change a little bit with like delays and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I kind of had a bit of an idea of like how long I should yeah. be going through it for you. Yeah. We were affected at all by, I know it was a year on from when COVID came out, but was any of the delays COVID related? Because I know that there was a second wave kind of came through yeah the delays weren't really covid related that was more just my body not being like as ready responsive or yeah not being ready for like to have more chemotherapy kind yeah. of thing but in terms of the covid yeah there was a lot of hospital restrictions on at the time yeah. with not 
um, having like family members and stuff coming. But um, the ward I was on in at the Royal was pretty good because I was, there was not really any young people. Yeah. I think I only crossed paths with a few other young people throughout my time there. So they yeah. were pretty um, good with letting me like have my girlfriend come up or yeah. have my parents come in for a little bit. But um, yeah, the COVID time definitely did make it a bit strange. Yeah. So from diagnosis, uh, June, 2021. Yep. To, so from then till at what point does the last bit of um treatment happen and they turn around and say like you you, you're clear here you're okay so i went into remission after that first month or so block yeah um so at that point they couldn't detect any cancer um but the rest of it was just about keeping that away yeah um so regardless of how i responded in the beginning the like it was always set that first period um but yeah so after four or five weeks i knew that there was no cancer which yeah. was the first bit of relief i guess yeah. yeah and then i think the chemo um went through until all about january of, yeah um 2022 so good six months yeah about six months yeah yeah um and that's fantastic you've you've been given i suppose the the health green tick yeah um but the desire to get back on a on a football pitch must take over at some point. You think, all right, well, when can I get back on? And at that point, is it a health thing or is it still a bone thing? Because um, I know that when you eventually come to to power, it was it was getting the seal of approval from um, the hip specialist. Yeah, orthopedic, orthopedic surgeon. Orthopedic surgeon. Yeah. yeah, so I was seen an orthopedic surgeon because I had um, a vascular necrosis, so a bit of um like the blood supply was cut off into some of my joints, which like gave a bit of bone death. Yeah. Um, so I was kind of having to wait to see if that was going to heal. Um, so I guess there was a, a few conversations saying you might not be able to get back to football, yeah. um, but just had to give it time. So I sat around and wasn't really running or getting into yeah. football too much or anything, just trying to let it heal. And I think it was about six months on, I got some more scans and there was signs of it healing, which was, Again, another relief. Um, so from that point, I was kind of able to gradually Start thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Get it, get it back in my mind a little bit. Yeah. So that must have been uh, that was halfway through or towards the end of. Yeah, I was getting towards the end um, yeah. of twenty twenty two. Um, is probably when I started getting back into some physical activity. Yeah, because I remember getting a, a call off your dad, and he said because. Um, I've obviously played with your dad over 45s and whatnot. And he rings out the blue one day and just says, um, Isaac's thinking about playing again next year. And I said, is that why he's come to a couple of power games? We've seen him <laughs> on the balcony. And uh, he said, yeah, probably. So we, we looked to, to sit down with you at the end of the season. and um, Didn't take much convincing, I have to say. You were, nah, you were pretty keen just to, to get back on board. and It was still very much at your pace. Uh, obviously, we got a in my opinion, the the best, you know, medic in, in football Queensland, I would say, Will Jordan. Um, and he was brilliant with you. And he just said, look, he used to say it was because it was Rick Coughlin was in charge at that point. Uh, and I'm on the staff and down police. We're all sat there. It's like, when can Isaac play? And Will's like, when he tells us he can play, he can play. And we knew that we were, might not be the start of the season. It might be four or five weeks in. That's what we kind of. And then I think there was a it was a preseason game. And you've asked if you can have ten minutes, and you got twenty. And then the next one you were supposed to get fifteen, and you got forty five. And it was at that point I think that you just thought, Ah, I'm I'm back now. I I, just, I need to be in. Yeah, I was feeling I was feeling pretty good. Obviously, it took a while to build up yeah. that fitness, but I was doing a bit by myself and with a couple other boys doing some like yeah. small training sessions, which definitely helped. But yeah, I was, like you said, I wasn't even myself expecting to get back until the early rounds of that yeah. year. Um, but played a few games in preseason and was feeling good. So I just kept building up from there and yeah, turned out well for the first few games of the season. Well, not just feeling good, looking good. Um, I had senior players coming up to me um, and they were just like saying, He's got to play. And this is when you weren't supposed to be playing. Mm. 
and in training you were doing bits and like seeing players come to me going, he's going to play this week. Like he is next level good. So then it, you get back in the team, you start playing and we're all on the sideline going, Man, we got, we got some player here. Um, but we got off to a slow start in the season. Yeah. And if I may, you're not getting up and down as well as what you had in January. And this is getting into March. And at, at this point, no one knows anything different. But three weeks later, you you obviously go for a routine follow-up. I'm assuming once you've been in that situation, you have to keep going back and they check and check. Yep. And I just remember, I think it was, you must have told Will Jordan, and he, he rang me and told us. So what, what what have they told you at that particular appointment? Yeah, so it was my 12-month yeah, routine, bone my biopsy, um, and just said that they could like detect some leukemia cells there again, which it was obviously tough to hear, but I kind of had a slight feeling. Um, just like uh, going back to the, one of the symptoms of it is the bruising, like yeah. just really easy bruising. And I think I said to my girlfriend, like one night I think come home from training and there was like a bruise on my arm, which I don't even remember yeah. like getting touched there or whatever. So I think from that point, I kind of had a bit of an inkling that something may have been up. Um, but yeah, it was, it was pretty tough because I think I had a blood test. Um, and then they, I had to come in for an appointment quicker than like I would have originally yeah. had to. Um, and then, yeah, they just said that they could detect something there. And I think I had a, yeah, the bone marrow biopsy and it confirmed it. So yeah, it was yeah. a bit of a shock since things were really going well. I was playing football at least and I was back into a bit of uni, bit of work. So yeah. Was it worse here in, at the second time than the first? I think so because at least the first time, like once it had settled a little bit, I kind of knew what I was in for, um, had like that positive outlook. Not to say that I didn't have a positive outlook the second time, but it was kind of like it had come back. Yeah. Um, so there was just a bit of uncertainty surrounding everything moving forward from there. And at that point there, they decide that look, the best way to treat this now is a uh, bone marrow transplant. Uh, which you've corrected as earlier, it's not surgery, it's, it's treatment. Um, so you've got to find a match. Yeah. So there's there's a worldwide donor registry. Um, so anyone who signs up to that, I think through a blood test or the now they're doing the mouse swab over here can join the registry. And um, anyone then needing the transplant does like a worldwide search to see if they're a match for anyone. Um, but there was no matches for me, like no 100% matches for me on that. Um, donor search so the next uh, best option is to look at family members yeah so my sister ended up being a 50 percent match for me which well, i was always pretty confident with that i guess there was no other alternative yeah um so went ahead with that she um had to get like her her stem cells collected um so it's like they take her blood out of one arm separate the stem cells and then give her blood back and then those stem cells are collected and put into a bag and that's what I got, essentially a blood transfusion of the cells, which is now my cells. Yeah. yeah. And after, at what point do they turn around and say, um, good job, we're, we're okay here? Um, it was 100 days after is the mark they yeah. use. Um, do a blood test and a bone marrow uh, biopsy. The blood tests, they can do a check to see the makeup of like whose cells are still in my body. Um, so the benchmark for that is 100% of my sister's cells, which it was, thankfully. Um, and then the bone marrow biopsy just shows that there's no leukemia there. Um, and then from there, just regular blood tests, like still even up until now, yeah. uh, every fortnight get a blood test and see the doctor. Um, and bone marrow biopsy every year just to make sure everything's going all right. So any, any hesitation from a sister around? Nah, didn't let her have any hesitation. <laughs> yeah. she, she, um, <laughs> she, does she like to bring it up every now and then? Just yeah, she does. <laughs> um, well, she's a, a nurse, so she's kind of in the know a little bit. Um, she's actually working in uh, cancer at the moment, mm -hmm. cancer care. 
So she kind of knew a bit about like what was going on, which fair probably play, did help. Fair play to her, she, she did enough to get you anything for Christmas or birthdays <laughs> for a while. Yeah, she does like to remind me about it. Yeah. Um, but just let it slide. Yeah, yeah. it's fair enough. Yeah. Um, and I got a, I got a call in January. I'm at training one night. Or well, message, message comes through, and I don't think I, you know, we haven't messaged for a couple of months at this point. Um, I use training tonight. I was like, yeah, I'm here now. Like, just down at AJ Kelly. He was like, all right, I'll be there soon. You must have been winning the car park because literally <laughs> about four minutes later, he walks. And I actually even said to Will, I saw uh, Isaac's popping down and Kazi. I said, Isaac's, as soon as I've said it, you've walked through and you, you've come in. Um, we're talking here for about three or four minutes and then he just chucks it out. He said, I've been given the old clear to play football. Straight away, I think Kazi was there, you know, Daft Kazi. Yeah. And he was like, uh, so he says, um, he said, you, you've only got two days to sign up or something. Oh. And Will's like, shut up. All right, let's <laughs> sign fire. Here. And, uh, but yeah, so you, you've now been training for five weeks? Six yeah, weeks? about that. So to be fair, that wasn't even really that long ago still. Um, I think I'd seen the doctor maybe the week before yeah. that. And, yeah, they just said, you yeah, know, all sweet to get back to football. So I was trying to do a little bit by myself yeah. to get some kind of so basis. But you couldn't help yourself, could you? Is this the official yeah, announcement? Well, he's back training, yeah. But is this the official announcement that he's signing for power or? I, oh, he's only got a play for power, hasn't he? <laughs> There's only one club, mate. Only okay. one club, he's Peninsula boy. He's starting to see the ulterior motors here, does <laughs> so, But no, you've you've done what? Um, yeah, it'd be five or six weeks worth of running. Yeah, about five weeks of running. I think of joining to... Yeah, a couple three of, sessions. A couple maybe. of times, someone's you know like come off injured in the middle of a session, mm. and he's chucked his boots straight on, just and he's on the pitch <laughs> doing the well, stretches. Down his his like he was just sat out. There he is, left back, ready to go. So, but yeah, I, I will say this: um, there's he knows he's just getting fit. Yeah. It's one hundred percent at his pace. Um, when he turns us up, I wouldn't mind getting some some games. Then we can look at doing it. But um, we even had a session last week where. The, the lads are only in for about 40 minutes. No one had told him because he's not in the group. So he's turned up to do a full session and the lads have finished, gone off to watch, I think the Broncos play um, at the, the pool. We went for a pool session. What He stayed and did his running. So um, I didn't give me a choice. We, uh, that's, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> we spoke a couple of weeks ago about a potential loan system. Yeah. So AC Crane are looking for a left back. Yeah. So if you want to... Can you take pens? <laughs> They've got a real problem with the of penalties. I might yeah, sub myself on it. There's a tape in there. But no, it, look, it's it's unbelievable to, you know, given what you've been through mm. um, for such a young age. And I'll I'll say this, that anyone who ever, you know, brings you up, so what's Isaac Ball doing? Is he um, genuinely one of the best kids I've ever worked with in football? Um, unbelievable family. Um, and you're an absolute credit to them. So I'm delighted that you've been given the the all clear to resume. Um, and I'm just looking forward to seeing you back on the pitch again. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate it, Ben. And so, hopefully it won't be too far away. I'm not going to lie. I was sitting here, like obviously listening, taking it all in. And as a, as a parent now, mm. I, was, I, felt, I felt lightheaded sitting here listening mm. to that. Like I literally yeah. had to keep uh, drinking water because I was – I was just thinking what your parents must have had to go through, and um, yeah, it's it's great news, mate, that you're um, you, you're cancer free now, and hopefully that continues in the future. Yeah, yeah. On a lighter stuff. Yeah, hundred percent. Dusty, you got any questions that we can lighten the mood? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Um, coming through, obviously, you mentioned you, you played for your dad quite a bit as a kid. Was, was he one of your sort of inspirations coming through or was there anyone else in particular that sort of stands out as a bit of an inspirational hero? For um, yeah, I think Dad would like to would like to hear that one. But no, nah, for sure, I guess from my earliest memories of football would be just in the backyard with him, mm -hmm. just dragging him out of the house every single day for as long <laughs> as I could get. Um, so, yeah, he played football. Being from the UK, I guess football is obviously massive, so... It's only natural for me to get started and start playing. And yeah, he was definitely a massive influence on it. Being mm -hmm. my coach as well from when I was five through to, yeah, 12 or 13. Mm -hmm. So um, definitely. Was there, um, when you sort of broke through at the Raw, like was there anyone in that squad at the time that you thought like, 
this this guy's ridiculous. Um, Ada O'Neill was pretty good. Um, He'd been at Burnley, hadn't he? Yeah, he had been. Yeah, I think he played against Liverpool. Um, yeah, so he was at the Mariners and then he come to us and just in training he was like unreal, just, just winning every shot. Up yeah. in the soccer, he's fouled now, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Is he? Yeah. yeah, he's doing well. But he was unreal in training every day, yeah. Oh, he's a Brisbane boy, wasn't he? Yeah. Didn't he come through a pink and bar? Yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah Brisbane athletic. Brisbane local, yeah. There you go. There you go. Good knowledge. Mm. Over here, Tom. <laughs> Oh, I'm still, yeah, I'm shocked. Still, still yeah, yeah. No, I'm just, yeah, I'm just in awe, to be honest with you. Yeah, but um, favorite memory in your fo- in your football, young footballing career. What would that young be? Young footballing career. Well, you're gonna play for another 20, 25 years, mate. So, um, best memory in football. Start today. still playing in his fifties, yeah, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, on a Friday night. That, be at walk football soon. But, <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, it'd be hard to pass up playing at some court, making my debut. Um, had all my mates there, all my family there. Um, just just cool. finished double maths on an afternoon. And <laughs> yeah, got to play for the first team. Obviously, that's it, that's an uh, yeah unbelievable to get a debut at that young age. But is is that where you want to be back back to? Yeah, I mean, I'd love to take it as far as I can again. Yeah. Um, like I'm not really pushing it, rushing it or anything. I'd like to prove myself again as like one of the better players in the league is my goal. So to hopefully push on and do well in the NPL and see where that can take me. But yeah, I just want to prove myself again and see where that can go. Um, all right. Best player you've ever played with and against? Best player I've played with and against. Um, pick one from my national team. Yeah. Probably be Ryan Teague. Um, He's always been one of the top players in our age group. Um, went over to Portugal and has come back and now he's doing well, playing with victory in the A-League. Um, yeah, he's always been what, if one of the top players our age in the country. Um, played against, I'd have to take it back to Tino, yeah. Livermento. Um, that was a massive eye-opener. Him, I guess, being a fullback as well when I was playing left back, like the difference, like ability, physicality, everything going and playing against that national team was pretty insane. And then to see him play at Chelsea and get a move to um, Southampton, then Newcastle was pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. and he looks every bit worth it as well, which pains me as a Southern fan. But do you do you remember who when you come on for your debut against Sydney? Do you remember who you're up against? Um, nah, I forgot his name. It was oh, a foreign. Some, some, yeah, some check, check your pocket. Yeah. He's probably still in there. <laughs> so I'm still spinning. Yeah. yeah, I was trying to think it, who was around at Sydney FC in those days, getting tossed on against. You know, obviously it was a bit late for Del Piero sort of thing, but must have been someone half decent, surely. Yeah, uh, doing well. Yeah. Um, best pick a five aside team of lads you've played at in the, in the local league with or against so obviously you, you had a good few years where you'd have been playing raw youth and then you had what, five or six games with power so in those spells eight, I think. eight, eight, but, eight yeah, yeah. No. would have been nine but the, the one game i was in charge i didn't put you under that <laughs> eight points <laughs> sounds about right um five side team uh need a keeper choco choco yeah. yeah no hesitation choco is Unreal. Um, at the back, take Rido. Yeah. Um, Mick. McGowan. Mick McGowan, yeah. He's two left footers, and it's going to be tough. Play um, even further forward if you want. He's playing in midfield now. Yeah, yeah so do. Um, take those two. Um, geez, I could have a team full of left footers here. <laughs> Sounds like a pretty good team. Yeah, yeah it does. <laughs> um, Wool. Josh Woolley. Yeah, he'll be in there. Yeah. He does a lot for us at power. Um, and then a striker. A striker. Pengelly. Chuck him in. Decent team. That'd be Reliable. Fun. Yeah. Yeah, decent team. Decent team. Um, and finally, uh, question to finish off, obviously, 
with with what you've been through has your perspective of football changed so from from where you were at three and a half years ago three years ago to where you are now is football completely um is it is it a different thing i know you you want to achieve is what whatever you can but you now look at it and go it's a bonus if i do yeah definitely um i remember i still remember walking out each home game at power when i was back playing just really soaking it in like I, at that point i kind of realized that it like you said it is a bonus and um i had been out for so long that i realized like i knew what it was like to not be able to play like not even have the choice of playing um so i guess i was yeah really trying to soak it in and um realize how lucky i was to be back out there because it was still so fresh obviously yeah um i had it it was easy to relate back to um so i guess yeah spending so much time in a hospital bed being able to be back playing football was um was pretty good and i guess yeah now that i'm back training again it's the same kind of thing like yeah every time i'm out of training it's much easier to appreciate it i guess you kind of take it for granted a little bit when um it's just a given but um yeah just trying to appreciate it and soak in every moment jeff obviously what you've been through you wouldn't wish it upon anyone but if there is any particularly not young people who get faced with a similar um thing that you have like do you have any advice for them or anything that you could tell them to keep hold of yeah i guess it is tough like there's no way around that anyone who's going through something like that cancer or any other health like medical issues it's tough but the main thing would probably just be to try keep a positive outlook um i feel like it makes a huge difference you just got to try find yeah the positive the light in any situation and kind of draw on that to get you through and just yeah look towards the future because there's no point dwelling on it like everyone's dealt a set of card you just got to make the most out of it and yeah look to look to see the light and, yeah. how old are you now 22 that was a pretty mature answer a very for mature a 22 year old play, yeah. the, play the cards you dealt yeah now yeah. it's good advice mate yeah. and i think people can take that into almost every facet of life so keep 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 living life with that sort of morals and i think you'll be all right yeah and fair to say and i think we've said this before um you've been dealt a fair the and to start with mm. um but those cards are in now you'll get some more make the most of them um we as a sub bench wish you all the best um and uh yeah hopefully we do another one of these in a few years time and you know things are way back where they should be and uh look back on this one yeah 100% so uh, thanks Definitely. for coming in um i know that you're a quiet lad and this is a little bit out of your comfort zone but you you've been superb mate as always so appreciate it thanks what an honor to be on the pod so thanks for me on <laughs> yeah, on the bench <laughs> it's like that day at east with me <laughs> um but look it's um yeah we'll we'll get the link put up um for anyone who is uh is keen to see if they're a match for for anyone yeah. um we'll get that put up um but hopefully you've enjoyed the episode um a little bit different from our usual stuff but you know story i think needed to be told um we'll be back in two weeks with uh, with more guests and uh, yeah like share subscribe and uh see you later all right all right